Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's see if the second method that we've just learned in the previous video also holds true no matter which direction the force acts. For example, here we have two very similar beams actually. They're meant to be exactly the same, the same length. They're connected on the left side in the same way so that they can both pivot in the very same way. Here we have a force of magnitude F pulling in this direction with an angle theta relative to the vertical. Here we have a, a force on the second beam, the same magnitude but a different direction. But the angle with the vertical is also theta, so that the two angles theta are the same and the two magnitudes of the force are the same. Well, I might as well call this F1 and F2 because since the two forces are acting in different directions, they can't possibly be the same force. They, they're two different vectors. Now, if we're going to calculate the torque on the left beam right here, we can say that the torque is equal to the force, F1, times the length of the beam, L, times the cosine of the angle between the vertical line and the direction of the force. In this case, it would be the cosine of theta. Here, we're claiming that the torque would be equal to the magnitude of the force, F2. And notice here that the magnitude, F1, is equal to the magnitude, F2. And if you want to write it like this to indicate that they are indeed the same, you can see that it would be the same magnitude times the length of the beam, L, times the cosine of the angle theta between the vertical and the direction of the force. Now, is that indeed the case? Are the two torques exactly the same, even though in this case the force is pulling to the left relative to the vertical, and this force is pulling to the right relative to the vertical? The best way to see that that is indeed the case is by taking these two forces and writing them as the sum of their two components. In other words, here would be F sub 1 in the y direction, and here would be F sub 1 in the x direction. And I might as well move it right here. There we go. There would be F sub 1 in the x direction. And we do the same with this force. Here this would be F sub 1. Or no, in this case, that would be F sub 2 in the y direction. And here we would have F sub 2 in the x direction. Now, notice a force can only apply a torque if the distance between the line of action of the force and the pivot point is other than zero. Notice that in both cases, in the case of force 1 and in the case of force 2, the x component goes right through the pivot point, so that means that the x component here cannot contribute to the torque at all. The distance between the line of action of the force and the pivot point is equal to zero. On the right side, again, you can see that the line of action of the force and the pivot point, that the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point also is zero, so in both cases, F sub 1x and F sub 2x cannot contribute to the torque. The only components that can contribute to the torque are the y components. And notice that the two y components are identical. They're identical in magnitude. They're identical in direction. And therefore, and also, their line of action is exactly the distance L away from the pivot point. Here, the line of action is exactly the distance L away from the pivot point. And for that reason, both of these forces apply the exact same torque to these two beams. That's why it doesn't matter if the force is pointing to the left of vertical or pointing to the right of vertical if the magnitudes are the same and the angles are the same away from vertical either to the left or to the right it contributes the same amount of torque. Of course if the force would be acting downward that's a different story because then you would have a negative torque because the direction would be clockwise instead of counterclockwise and then of course you need a, a negative sign in that case wherever the, the force is pointing downward instead. So now you see that the second method does work beautifully. All you have to do is know the angle between the direction of the force and the vertical, and realizing that it doesn't matter if it's to the left or the right from vertical, the angles are the same, the torques will be the same, as long as L is the same and the magnitude of the force are the same. And that's how it's done.